Okay, uh, see, uh, today we are going to talk about actually this is In the last class, we were talking about uh, briefly just mention this test. Remember, we are talking about experimentally determining all the hydrodynamic coefficients. Okay. Now, what we found out? We found out that among the Hall derivatives, y v, etc., n v. y delta n delta. This is what we can do using straight line test. Then y r n r in addition to this we can do using rotating arm test. Of course, this test required a large facility etcetera etcetera. Now, however, we still have to determine acceleration derivatives like in addition to this. So, for that this new technique and basically it is an equipment system, you can say it is a system, it is an equipment as well as a measurement system came up. In fact, for ships we can for, for the mechanism we used for ships, surface ships one can add a word here horizontal. Horizontal planar motion mechanism HPMM. Okay. What is this system and what is the beauty of this system? Let us talk about it in a minute. See, this system consists of two, there is a system where we have got a mechanism where the ships can be held at two locations. Okay. I will mention this later on. It can be held at two points, let us call it point B and point A, some, some two points and independently the model can be made to oscillate this way. So, what it means is that see it is something like that, you look at this. The, so, this is the kind of a two struts there, okay. model is tied here. And you can independently move this, say this one and this one. That means, I am attaching the model here, attaching the model here. These are the two struts and there is a force dynamometer here at this point at this point and I can make the ship move this point up and down as well as this point up and down. For example, if I do it together, it will be like that, but if I did separately, I can have a motion like that. Do you understand the point now? See here, this system again. I'll tell you. Okay, if if I were to look in a in a carriage form, in a just very rough way, I would have had a. I'll come back to this then. A, say a carriage here. Some kind of a carriage here. Okay. Below that, I have say two struts. The system. At some point of here, I am attaching my model. This attachment point can be fixed. This full thing is attached to that by some means. And along this line, I can make the model to go out to and through horizontally. horizontally. This is a horizontal plane. See, this is a this is a, this thing x direction. This is the y, you know, this is the y direction. Say, this is a for and the, of course you make the model move together. That means, there is a towing carriage here. Full thing is moving like a towing carriage. What we are doing in a in a in a resistance dynamometer, we actually have a point attachment here. 
you attach with the e equipment here and tow the full model. Here the attachment is not that, it is over, it, there is a system, it is about two rods, as I said, two rods like that, in which you are connecting your model. This points where you are measuring, the model can be made to move independently, like, like this can be made to move like that, this can be made to move like that, independently, which means going back to this uh, system in schematic, I can give this one a motion A0, say sin or cos omega t, and here I can give A0 or a, another one, see, see, let me call it A1, A2, sin, epsilon, independently, these two are independent mechanism. So, independently I can oscillate them in a horizontal plane, remember this is my x axis, u, this is my y axis, small v. I will come to this full thing in a, uh, in a minute, but we should understand this system here. So, the PMM system essentially consists of an equipment where the model is attached, this full equipment system as I uh, showed in the previous one, this, this, this equipment system is what is called PMM mechanism. Two struts there on which you attach a model, there are dynamometers here where you can measure the forces coming in this direct, y direction, that is I can measure the forces here. Okay. I can measure the forces here and the control is that I can independently make the attachment point move of a given amplitude A1 or A2 in a sinusoidally. Say this is sin omega t, so let us say I, I call it sin omega t plus epsilon because there can be a phase gap independent, that is why I write o, um, epsilon. Now you see by this is the mechanism, we must understand this mechanism first. And of course, what we are measuring here, we are measuring here y standpoint, y bow point, because there is an equipment here. You can also measure x. So, suppose this point is O here, the origin. Then I end up getting here y, y will be there for y b plus y s, and I end up getting here n if I call this to be x s x b let us say, if I call this to be x s then my n become remember y b into x b minus y s into x s because it is net force. No? So, what is happening? I am having this system here, I will draw another one uh, with, with this di diagram uh, better. Dynamometer here, dynamometer here, measuring force in the y direction, the attachment point, obviously the attachment point is where, the, because this is a rod here on which I am giving a motion. Here I can give a motion, that means the model, therefore you see something like this model, I can tow the model with this way. So, this one, these two lines I can independently oscillate and I model, I can go like that. Okay. And of course, I am measuring at these two attachment point the y forces. This is the mechanism, let us understand the equipment may differ in detail. Normally, you are going to attach this mechanism below a carriage, obviously there is a carriage here, below that the mechanism is existing on which you attach the model and the full carriage is stored forward. So, that means you are towing the model like this forward. Now, I will give some specifications. What we do now, I will draw one more diagram to show. Normally, what you do, let us draw a bigger diagram here. See, this is my point O. Normally, what you do, you attach these two struts at equal distance. See here, I of course, mention here that it can be any distance, right, x, 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 b, whatever. But normally what you, you would do, you would keep this to equidistance, you can always place the model, right. This, this distance is more or less fixed, but you can also, the equipment can also separate it out slightly, but you give that. So, let us say this, I call this here, uh, let me call this to be a bow point, point B, attachment point, as we said S point, and we have here uh, X S. 
Now, you remember this side, this is my y, this is my n, this is also my direction v, okay. this is also plus y plus x. This side, the one that I am measuring, measuring is y star y b. This is what I am measuring. Remember, this is being measured. Same is this. Okay, these two are you are measuring. You are giving an independent motion here. Let me call it this y stand. Oh, sorry, y. This is y b. This y. Both of them normally you give a. We can call this. Well, let this. I let me call it now cos. Some, no, what I, I am seeing is that in the actual test, although you can have this amplitude different, normally you are going to keep the amplitude same. I'm, the equipment allows you to fix it anywhere. This can be different than this. This can be different, independent control. But what happened? We will be, this is the equipment. Now, we have to do this test. Let me call this to be as if this is A0 cos omega t. I am calling cos omega t for uh, you know ease of plotting. This is my plus y and the, I call it uh, A0 cos omega t plus minus epsilon, some phase gap obviously. Now, you see of course, now remember I am measuring this quantity and this quantity. Of course, as I said earlier, then my y, this y is y b plus y s and n equal to y b minus y s into x x. This measured. So, I am measuring this remember in any experiment you have a system of control and system of measurement. This is in short the description of a horizontal planar motion mechanism because in the horizontal plane, in the horizontal plane I am able to give a planar motion in the plane. Of course, I tow along with that. Let us see how what we can do with, with this. So, this equipment once we uh, understand that. See remember what we told in the last class, I want to ensure that I can selectively make one of the four v, v dot r, r dot non-zero and rest are zero, something like that because I need to measure a force when all are zero excepting one. This is my objective basically. Now, there are you see this is a system. So, there are different kind of tests that can be done. Number one, number one is that now I will refer back to this all the time. Number one is that see here we call this is this becomes actually same as straight line test. What we do? Suppose I keep you know uh, one more thing I can always tell that y. What is this y? Y is nothing but y s plus y b. You know y s plus y b right? You no, know, basically average of that. Okay, depending on how much I do. This is y here is y s plus y b at two. All right. Now what we do? You see interesting point. Suppose, I do not change it, I make omega to be equal to infinity, means I do not change it. I just keep a fixed. So, I keep y b something, and y is something. So, how the model is oriented then? I just keep y b as some value constant value 
y s as another constant value. What would happen? This angle I am just not here becoming correct dimensionally because it can be you know like if this plus b here plus b here then the theta is on this side etcetera etcetera never mind that but, but the drift angle is like this. If my y b is fixed not a function of time y is not a function of time beta is this. So, what I can do of course, I tow it in this fashion what we have achieved exactly what we have done in a straight line test. In a straight line test what we did? We simply took an angle and told the model and what we did? We measured y and n versus, uh, uh, versus uh, uh, beta which is actually v dash. We also measured y and n versus delta which is rather angular. So, you see here one default option of this mechanism is that I can in fact, I can be used as a resistance test. Supposing I keep both of them exactly same and tow it and measure in this the x values x forces in the dynamometer, then I can find resistance. Yeah, the way we do that you know the x force if I keep this two same exactly same that means beta is 0 then I tow it and measure x force that is my uh, resistance force. So, if I keep beta equal to some beta as I uh, showed here and tow it with of course, rather to be 0 then I get y versus n against this thing or if I tow a straight line with a beta with a, with, with a sorry with a delta rather angle I will get this y delta. So, what happened I, this is a by default version reducing the mechanism to do straight line tests. And therefore, I can do exactly whatever I could do here y v, n v, y delta, n delta I can measure from what is called static test. Of course, I can also measure the nonlinear terms now v delta, n delta etcetera whatever we have talked earlier. So, the static test is nothing but re re reduce from a straight line test. Of course, for that purpose you would not have come with a new mechanism because you could always do straight line test. So, the next the more important part for this mechanism of course, is dynamic test what we call okay, number 2, where we can measure v dot r dot all the term. Okay, so, the next system is the this dynamic test. Then there are two versions of that one is what we call pure sway test we I will come to that we will we'll today's class discuss the first one probably. Okay. In pure sway what we want to do? We want to make sure the model is purely swaying there is no see means I want to see here only v v dot no r r dot here we will come to that. So, there are two kind of tests. So, we will talk of this pure sweet test first. Now, you see here once again this uh, system here. Now, suppose I keep this two same a is 0 cos omega t a 0 cos omega t. What is my delta? delta will be 0 because after all remember the delta is the difference between the two. So, if I now where to keep the model here and here same these distances that is y b I call it a 0 cos omega t y s also a 0 sorry cos omega t then what is y? A 0 cos omega t, right. How does y look like? Or what is beta? 0. If beta is 0, okay, angle of attack, 
going not angular but I am not actually well you can say that beta 0 in a sense, but I would not want to call it beta 0 we will just leave it li like that because it depends on the forward speed part little bit. So, what is happening we are actually moving this way and also but however, we are actually beta on this zero because we are having a forward speed u. So, what happened if you look at that this model is going to have y equal to a 0 cos omega t y, but x of course, is u t forward that is why beta 1 b 0 x and y. So, how does this look like now this is the most interesting part the model will therefore, go if I call y equal to a 0 this side my plus y. So, the model is uh, uh, let me call it my uh, in this diagram minus of course, right look at this any any point here See, I will have forward to motion this I will come to that how this V comes in you know. See, what is happening why is this actually in my diagram of course, is become minus this because I am calling this to be plus y. Yes, it is a question of nomenclature I am calling this side plus y. So, of course, this is happening is that this minus the graph I plotted here is minus cos curve because this is my plus side this will have been a cos curve. Okay. What is V? dy by dt how much is this? This is going to be plus omega a 0 you agree with that and what is V dot? So, if I were to plot here the two graphs V is going to look like sin plus sin this is plus psi that means, it is going to look like this is, this is here maximum this 0 here. So, this is going to be V y dot and how does V dot look like? V dot will look like a cos curve plus side this is actually minus cos. So, it is going to look like this way. What is the amplitudes? And this, of course. All right, that is what you are getting. Now, what happened? 
you are measuring the obviously so what we have achieved here remember what you have achieved here remember what is my r r is 0 because there is no term it is rotating so this test where i am purely swaying with keeping these two amplitudes same so what i am doing is going like that so i am only imposing v but no v and v dot but no r because for r i need to have rotation there is no rotation there right for r i need to go like that but i am only going this way see when i go this way there is no rotation what is the rotation about this point about the ships about this point the rotation is actually rotation about this point no rotation any point just translating so this is what we call pure sway test you are achieving a pure sway but the interesting point is that you see that v and v dot both are present throughout the time but there are instances at this point for example i have only v dot but v is zero this point this point this point but look at this point here where i have only v but v dot is zero okay i can call this to be in phase and out of call this out of phase now what we are doing do we do of course is that i will I, maybe we can write it down here with, with this time let me write it down here at this point see here my y is 0 okay my v is omega a 0 my v dot is 0 right at this point my y is minus no plus a 0 here is plus a 0 my v is 0 my v dot is this side this is actually negative side okay now if you look at this point we will have y equal to 0 v equal to here i said plus minus and if you look at this point you will find y equal to plus no y equal to minus a 0 because y has gone this side v equal to 0 v dot equal to plus omega square a 0. So, you see depending on this periodic time you have this this thing now what you are doing i will draw another uh, diagram later on to illustrate what we are doing we are measuring a force how will the force you are only measuring the force right the force would look like uh, something like maybe maybe this is the cost maybe something like this this may be my y you are measuring that remember I am measuring y b and, and of course n also may be like that y and n let, let me call it. Then what is happening you know therefore you are able to find out I will come to the math part in a minute you are able to find out this point see this much of y is the y arising only because of this v dot v is 0 because remember this y is y v dot v dot plus y v v plus maybe an inertial force here v dot is 0. So, this much of force is arising only because of this much of a 0. Here this much of y force is arising only because of this much of v. So, you see what is happening I measure the force I am just talking the principle we will talk about the uh, maths in a, in a minute. So, what happens I have measured the force history okay. Now, there are fixed times if I call it t 0 at t 0 then after this is a full period t then t equal to you know like uh, in this uh, this thing if I have this a period then t equal to 0 t equal to uh, uh, you know like this is t by 2 t equal to like period I mean basically half a period you know n t by 2 n by 2 into t 
for n 1, 2, 3, 4, I am getting purely acceleration no velocity and if I just phase it by half n plus half d by 2, you will end up getting v. So, what is happening therefore, you end up getting cases, now remember no r there. So, I have only v and v dot. Okay. So, now I can find out, all I have to do is to find out this force and that force. Now, I will come to the force part in a minute. You see now, let me put it this way. Let me call this force y. Now, what I measured this y, this dotted line, this dotted line, I can call this to be y 0 cos omega t plus some epsilon or it can also be called as y, I will tell you here this, I we call it sin and cos, no, y in or y 1 we can call it, or we are calling y in. You remember that this is very simple, know that you can always make, remember that you are measuring this forces. See, once again I will see here, what I measured is, see this is my period 1, 2, 3, 4. I have a signal which may look like, if I were to start from here, something like that, which of course is with a phase gap, but remember that this signal can be written as part of two signal. One can be a cos curve going like that and one can be a sine curve. See, this is my maybe this this peak peak where it happens. This peak is y zero. See, understand this. What is happening that I had this signal, this force which is coming. I have no control on that. It is coming something like that. Okay, which has an amplitude y and it has a phase. So that's why it is not zero at zero. When t is zero, it is not zero. Some kind of phase is there. But the same signal can be written in terms of y in cos omega t plus y out uh, sin omega t because you can if you it is very simple to see if I expand that y 0 cos omega t uh, cos epsilon minus y 0 sin omega t sin epsilon is not it if I ex expand that. So, this will become something like see if I expand that what is this y 0 cos a cos b no cos epsilon cos omega t cos a plus b is what cos a cos b minus sin a sin b right. So, this will be minus i 0. So, you know that this minus simple as that you can get this too. Now, what is happening look back at this one remember that I have this force now which is, I will write the force here again or y force, y in, what did we write, y in cos omega t. So, this part is in phase with this, because here it is omega square a cos omega t and I am getting y in cos omega t. Okay. And here V is sin omega t, I am getting sin omega t. What it means is that that is why I am calling in phase and out phase force. So, if you measure this, what is happening? This force arises because of this much acceleration and this will arise because of this much of velocity. Simple as that because why? Because remember that essentially what is happening at the time, see what is y in amplitude? No. 
when remember when sin omega t is 0 cos omega t equal to plus or minus 1. So, when this goes off I have only y in the force and this y in force will come because of this much of velocity. Once again I, I just understand this part when instant instances when omega sin omega t is 0 what would happen v is 0 v dot is omega square a okay what is y force this is 0 y force is y in. So, therefore, I am getting for v dot equal to omega square a 0 y force of y in opposite if I want to get the opposite I, I take cos omega t is 0 at the instant when sin omega t is plus or minus 1 because they are out of phase. So, if I you can see easily that sin basically when I have acceleration 0 my omega a 0 velocity I get y out. So, what is happening d v y at y equal to y out I my v is equal to omega a 0 at y equal to y in my v dot equal to omega square a 0. So, d y by d v I can easily find out remember what we are trying to do I want to find out v versus y v dot versus y when I have no v see I want to find out v versus y when v dot is 0 and I want to find out opposite v dot versus y when v is 0 right. So, what I find out when v is equal to omega a 0 y is equal to y out when v is equal to omega square a 0 y equal to y in. So, what is my uh, uh, y v y v is going to be there for basically y out divided by I am just not taking this sign properly the sign one has to take y out divided by omega a 0. What is n v then? Similarly, well actually this we can write this we can write basically y b right y b out plus y s out by omega is 0. Because y out is basically this two sum no see as I mentioned here y out or y any y force actually y force is sum of these two what you do separately actually the processing is done because you know remember you are not measuring this you are measuring this and this. So, basically we have this y s also as y s in and y s out y b as y s y b in and y b out. So, you know that way if you do you get end up getting uh, separately like this similarly n v becomes uh, in fact it, it becomes because for this only we need that it becomes x s y b because this part is your basically this is n out n out is essentially y b out minus y s out into x s. So, you end up getting this value, but for for um, uh, for acceleration now there is this um, uh, you have to take into account of this this part you know y v dot minus m I will tell you why. I am just putting this bar because why I am putting this bar you know because this sign you have to be careful which side you are taking y which side you are taking omega 0 automatically sign will come out. See here I uh, will tell you why this minus m comes in in a minute. Uh, is in y b out minus y s in 
we are just writing this way only. I can put this thing. Actually, this as once again I am telling you this bar I have put may not be the actual bar. This I am just leaving to you because what happened there will be a typical sign. See, you have to take a correct sign for this and this. That means the amplitude whether it is plus or minus, whether this is you are taking plus or minus, etcetera, the sign will only come. Since there may be confusion, I am just putting a bar. But in reality, you will have to actually take care of what should be the thing. The bar will not be there. For example, this you will find out that if I were taking consistently, if I measure y on this side, see in this case y positive this side, then I must take the capital Y force on uh, y this side, then I must take uh, you know like omega a 0, this one is plus and this one this one is minus depending on uh, the time. That means, I must take v to be v an amplitude positive on this side etcetera etcetera. You know, so that you have to take care because you will find out that when the amplitude in fact, what would happen when the amplitude is positive here this is wrongly done when I actually uh, do this way this force would have been dotted line would show on the other side typically the dotted line would have shown this way. That is, if I give plus omega a 0 as v force would be measured force would have come on the other side. I mean the take the measured force should actually have looked something like this. Okay. So, this is this is a question of what the output comes and how you measure it. So, this is in principle the way we are doing the pure sweat test. Now, once again I want to tell you that see the, now, the data processing part comes in. L let me uh, draw this uh, once once more just this velocity part then we will know. So, so, velocity comes here as sin omega t you know for v part. So, I have this say. So, the v is written as uh, sin omega t sin is uh, so. Say this is actually v say omega What happened is that see here, this is a, an interesting point here. My force would have come, acceleration is, uh, let me just see, so that I want, I want to make sure that I am getting the right sort of a, this thing. Uh, a, uh, your v dot is cos omega t, so v dot would have been this side plus, so my means I get a force would have been here. Maybe I would get a force something like. this would have been my y. I am just presuming it, okay, I am just drawing it. Now, what is happens? Remember that at this instant, this is v. At this instant, actually it would, oh no, this, this would have, this, would, this line would be still down, sorry. So, this is not the one something like that. Okay. You have got and this is my y, this is my y. What you expect this same as this, same as this etcetera is not it. See at this instant the point I am saying that this, this value if you look out this will be actually same as y out in my nomenclature. What, what I am just understand this, this is important for me to, uh, to convey to you. This red line is what you measured, what the instrument has measured. This red line is what the instrument that you have placed it here has measured. This here I have put an equipment, they are measuring the y forces. So, I measured this y s, y b and I sum them up and divide them I get y. I have measured, I have no control on that, this is as measured, that is what the red line looks like. Okay. Technically or theoretically this should be a sinusoidal curve, theoretically it should be a sine curve. Therefore, what happens here that is this value should be this value, should be this value. If you do 10 oscillation, the 10 values of each oscillation you get 2 points, so 20 
uh, in the points should be same value. So, what I can do? I can measure this that means that t equal to in, in this case here t by 4 right. This is if I make it no sorry t this is t this t by 4 here because from here to here is 1 t. So, then t by 4 plus t by 2 like that you know t by 4 plus t like that this instances okay. I have this y out. What I can do? I can average this out and ba basically measure my y out and take that to be my this y out, this y out. But of course, when you want to do data processing, this value may not look like sine, it may look something like this. So, what would you do then? That is the question that comes in because you have no choice. So, you not. So, of course, one thing is that you will try to tell that I will take average of all these forces, but remember one thing that is the most interesting point that is what I want to tell here. When I do that, what did I do? I measured remember all these points you know like in a digitized form I have got in my record all the points. My computer has actually given t versus y you know. 0 0.0, 0 0.001 like that all these values. Suppose I am taking 40 points per oscillation or 100 points say yeah, what we call 100 hertz you know like uh, sampling rate 100 per oscillation 10 oscillation at 1000 points, but each out of which 100 point only 2 points 2 measurements what I am using for y out if I use only those 2 points. Do you understand that? This is important to understand. You are measuring 100 points of which only the 2 points are the one where my v equal to so and so and v dot equal to 0, right. So, essentially I used only 2 points and the other the out of 100 points and other 2 points when v dot equal to something v equal to 0. That means, I am only using 4 points if I were to use only this selected points to measure my y out and y in. What about the rest uh, you know uh, uh, 96 points not getting used up, wasted. Do you want it? You do not want it. So, what we should do so this is the point what we should do is that we would like to ensure and that is a part of data processing you would want to ensure that I want to measure this y in and y out okay taking all the points all the measurement points now this is interesting so here um, uh, how do i do that once again i have a signal it may not be sign okay this is my y signal all the points have been measured this i am writing i am writing remember as y in sin omega t that is what we write no, no cos omega t sorry oh, let me write we I am writing it as y equal to y in that is what I want to write remember and what is my objective find out this and find out this because these are the one which are those values remember in this case this is nothing but y out and this is nothing but y in, this is nothing but y in, this is nothing but y out right. That is what I want to find out, but here I find y out for observation 1, y out for observation 2 all different and not only that I end up using only fixed points. So, wh what shall we do? Now, this I will leave it to you, there is very interesting way of doing things. What we can do you know, I, I have this y, this is a function of time what I should do? You take this multiply with cos omega t d t integrate 0 to some some say period say n t. Now, I will want to leave it to you that when I do that what, what happens? I am doing up to some point forget this n t part. Now, you see here this what is y t? let us write it this this way here 
y in y in is cos omega t plus y out this I am multiplying with cos omega t d t integrating over 0 to some fixed period because I know the oscillation period t 10 seconds. So, I will I will start from some point and do for say 40 second or 50 second or 60 not 42 or some second that is what I mean n t some n it can be any n. Now, you see this value what happened to this this is y in cos square omega t plus y out sin omega t cos omega t is how much sin 2 omega t by 2 right now tell me integration of this is what 0 so what you end up getting is therefore 0 to nt y in But what is cos square omega t? 1 minus sin 2 by 2. Okay, 1 plus cos 2 omega t by 2. So this becomes y in by 2 plus y in by 2 cos 2 omega t integration d t you agree with that no. So, then again this term goes to 0. So, what you end up getting what that is my point I am leaving it to you for exercise what you will end up getting is if you do that you will end up getting an expression of something into y in that is something you work it out what is that that means if I take the signal if I took the signal all the points of the signal multiply by cos omega t integrate it then I will end up an expression that is going to be basically something into y in what we have achieved there I have used all the points all the data points remember okay, all the data points I have used and ended up getting an integrate basically if you do that in your term of integrate area you know some in a some sense integrate area because you are multiplying this with cos omega t and integrating the area that becomes something like y in. So, if I did that I am ending up getting this y in in a so much better way see I wanted to find out this and this. So, I first I take the full signal multiply with cos omega t integrate that I will end up getting y in take next time multiply with sin omega t and integrate that you will get y out I will leave that to you to work it out, but this process becomes so much better because what has happened here that even if the signal is actually not sign it is looking something like it may happen that this point you want to use and at that point only there was some kind of a this thing you know some kind of a spike. So, if you were to use this how much error you would have had just this point because just that point some vibration came let us say in an equipment because out of 100 points you are using only that point and just at that instant or around that instant somebody jumped on the carriage and there was a vibration. Okay. So, you end up getting this wrong result, but if you did that way this integrate Fourier uh, sort of method analysis you end up using all the points and this is exactly what is done. So, that means even though we are saying see now the I will just sum it up and we will do it tomorrow for the other one even though I am saying I am doing this test. Okay. Then I am saying that there are instances remember I am saying instances where there are v 0 v dot some value and v dot 0 v some value even then the force that I measured I end up using all the points of that measurement to determine my y v y v dot n v n v dot that means to find out that part of the force which has arisen only because of v and that part, part of the force arising only because of v dot I used entire point. So, you see how nice it has become of course, the principle if you see you will you will find out that what we have done is we have presumed this broken line is nothing but a sine curve 
we actually what you have done is that this broken line, this black line, I have actually presumed to be a nice fit of sine curve, so that the area under that curve into cos omega d remains constant. We have used the area concept and then found, found out the in phase and out phase component. That is what has been done and this is exactly what is done normally. Okay. So, this is my PMM pure sweat test, I will end it here. We will do tomorrow pure yaw test which is little more complicated in terms of phasing because now I have to make sure I have only R and no V V dot. Okay, which means my body must go tangential to the, you know, the, the path, path line should be tangential to the, you know, or velocity vector should be tangential to the path line. This we will discuss tomorrow's class. Okay, so with that I will end today's class. Thank you.